We've taken the model built for forecasting health service demand in the United States for each of the 50 states and now applied the same model to uh, countries in Europe. And the key findings from that analysis are we expect the peak for Europe as a whole to be in the third week of April, at which point the at the peak, there will be more than 4,000 deaths a day, we expect, although that has a wide range on the possibilities. And we expect the demand f at that point for hospitalizations throughout Europe to be in excess of 150,000 a day, and the demand for ICU beds to be above 30,000 a day. So uh, a huge steady expansion uh, for the health service need in Europe. The forecasts that we make of uh, resource need are based on two components. One component of the modeling is to try to uh, model the trajectory of death rates by day in the, each country of Europe. And then based on our projection of death rates, we back calculate based on all the health service data that's out there, how many hospitalizations, how many ICU admissions, how much ventilator need there is relative to each death. Uh, the, de the key issue in forecasting need is really about predicting the peak correctly. And the, in the, when we first started evaluating these forecasts in the United States, the only known peak and decline was Wuhan City. Fortunately for our model now, we have peaks that have occurred in at least seven regions in Italy and Spain, likely more now because we're starting to see encouraging signs in other parts. So that strengthens the analysis of when we think the peak will occur. We predict the peak, the key determinant of predicting that peak is when social distancing measures were put in place, by which we mean school closures, closures of non-essential businesses, and stay-at-home orders. And those are the determinants in the statistical analysis of when the peak in deaths will occur. We're now on the second generation of our U.S. forecast model based on getting a lot of feedback of uh, ways to improve the U.S. forecasts. In particular, we have much more detailed clinical information on variations in practice patterns, who gets uh, sent to the ICU, who gets ventilated. So some of that detailed understanding has been built into our health system uh, resource need forecasting. And we've had a lot of experience on the daily updating of our forecasts in the US around challenges in making these forecasts more robust. We uh, have a better way to understand our forecast accuracy and we've built that into our ranges in the model. And we have found uh, ways to explore how strong is the relationship between different ways of thinking about social distancing and when the peak occurs. So our European forecasts are building on that experience of essentially the first 10 days of producing US state-by-state -state forecasts on a daily basis. So clearly our forecasts are going to be more useful for countries that are starting the upswing uh, I think in places where the epidemic is peaking or is actually on the downswing, parts of Italy, parts of Spain, uh, they're probably less relevant. But uh, those experiences directly inform uh, some components of the model and strengthen the basis for it. In the places where we're expecting a later peak, having a sense of the potential magnitude and the range of resource demand uh, we think will be helpful for planners, particularly hospital leaders, administrators, to plan for what may be the surge in their 
hospital systems. And that's really the, the, the root of our uh, modeling attempt, which was to serve the, the demands of particular hospital systems here uh, in the US. The numbers and our forecast for the UK are particularly concerning. Uh, they suggest you know, a peak uh, right in the middle of the month and uh, that there'll be continued increases in daily deaths until that peak and a huge stress on the health system in terms of demand for, or at least need, for ICU beds and ventilators. And those, I'm sure, will are being, um, you know, considered and thought about very carefully by the NHS and, and other leaders in the UK. The uh, large increase, why, why is the UK seem to be having quite a large epidemic? And, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. What we see, just as in New York City, is a much larger epidemic than many other parts of the United States. There seems to be differences by community in the speed of, of the rise at the beginning of the epidemic, and that feeds into the estimates of the, of the total size. And then there's the question about how quickly social uh, distancing mandates were put in place. Just as with our US forecasts, which we update daily, uh, partly because the epidemic is changing quickly, new data comes in, new health practice pattern data, which really strengthens the basis for our modeling. Uh, we will do the same for Europe. I think it's of particular relevance for people on the, on the beginning of the epidemic. We will also be expanding our modeling exercise to other regions in the world and plan to also keep those uh, up to date on a, on a daily basis. We hope that uh, people looking at these forecasts, if they have other data that can tell us about how national clinical practice differs, you know, the triage strategy for who gets uh, sent to the ICU or put on a ventilator, as an example, that can strengthen our resource use forecasting and better reflect local clinical practice patterns. So it's a, we're doing this as a public service um, and hope that uh, it is fundamentally a useful planning tool for decision makers facing quite challenging times in the month ahead.